Yeah. Chris, you're you're down 20 on the road yeah. in game 7 to the defending champs. Yeah. Like what just what did you see from your guys that were allowed to pull this thing out? I mean, the effort was there. You know, we just had to our offense kind of went sideways in the first half. Um and they really upped their defense. They were very physical. Um and we just talked about you know, kind of getting back to simplifying our offense, if you will. I thought, I thought we were trying to over-orchestrate matchups and mismatches and all this other stuff and kind of played right into their hands. Um, so we just had to get back to kind of moving the ball. We didn't shoot the ball particularly well, typical game seven in that regard. Um, but, you know, even when we were, um, you know, down, like I was kept looking at the field goal percentage and we were in the 40s, in the 30s. Our defense was there. Um, and then it went to a special place in the third quarter, you know, where, where we've been able to take it at times. Um, and, you know, just everybody just kind of, <clears throat> you know, bucking up and making plays and uh, executing the game plan. So, you know. Was the moment like for you at the end of the game? You got up yeah. hundred, hundreds of Wolves fans cheering for you yeah, and man. just you closed it out. What's it feel like? To yeah, first of all, I'd love to uh, really like to say Thank you to our road support, both in Phoenix and here. It's been a ton of Wolves fans in the building. It's been great. I know that they're uh, enjoying the ride, and we really appreciate their support. Um, you know, special moment, man. This is a hell of a team um, with the best player on the planet. And uh, this series was wild, and this game was just a microcosm of the entire series. You know, um, teams getting a big handle on each other and just, you know, trying to fight through it. So... Rudy, Nas, and Jaden. Yeah. Uh, does that just kind of speak to this team and, like, I know the confidence that everybody plays with when you guys are at your best? Yeah, I was really proud of Nas. You know, he was a little frustrated because we kept kind of pulling him out. I think, you know, Cat was playing so well and um, and uh, just wanted to kind of keep going back to that. But he stayed in it mentally, uh, made big plays, made hustle plays, um, you know. Uh, and, you know, it, obviously – you know, they did a great job of throwing multiple bodies at Ant, made it tough for him all night, um, and that always leaves up other opportunities. And, you know, J Jaden came into the series from a scoring point of view uh, in game six and continued it today. Um, you know, we got a couple end of the shot clock, lucky shots to go in, which we needed. You know, but when you're playing the right way, and those, you create those, that, that, that amount of luck. So. Um. What, did you say anything at halftime only because, like, the rebounding was significantly different? Yeah, I mean, we were getting crushed. They had 14 second-chance second points. That, that was where our defense was letting us down the most. Uh, 14 second-chance points in the first half. We had to get a handle on that uh, more than anything. Um, but I was really pissed about the offense. thought the offense had de degenerated completely um, for no real reason. Uh, and so we, 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 uh, we, we addressed both those things. So. Chris, it seemed like uh, Carl has had the, the defensive matchup of Jokic has been so important yeah. for him here. You, it seemed like he was what kind of pulled the offense, though, out of that time when it was devolving. Just kind of that element of Carl and what he was able to do. Yeah, I mean, I thought one of the key moments, yeah, Cat was really special offensively, particularly in the second half. Um, and, and uh, you, you know, got his drive game going. Uh, we had got going in the post early. Um, you know, I thought we were trying to play through Ant a lot, and it was kind of bogging us down. And we, you know, when we got him out in the second quarter, we got Kyle in there, kind of loosened up the ball movement a little bit, and uh, you know, we were able to get some other guys in the, involved just to, just enough to feel the game. You know, and we had a great, you know, we had six guys in doubles, and you know, they had two guys score uh, 69. You know, and um, and it's they're great players, but it's it, that's hard to do in a game seven is. Uh, um, carry that much load all the way through. So, Coach, uh, what do you think it meant uh, for Cat to get over this hump? He's yeah. been with the franchise so long, and yeah. also overcoming the pressure that he probably had on him yeah. more than just about anyone in this game. Yeah, I think it means a lot. I think you see how how uh, at peace and happy he is right now. Um, you know, he had to trust that uh, he was never going to be marginalized. You know, it's all young players always think that they can do it all by themselves, but in this league, nobody can. Um, you know, he's been on many teams where he's had to do a lot, and he's got an incredible skill to do so. Um, but he's really bought into doing all the other things that we need him to do. Um, you know, last last series he guarded Durant. This year is Jokic. Um, you know, score, play through him when the moment is there. But we're not playing through him all the time. Staying ready. 
um, staying positive, you know, and staying mentally in it. And you know, couldn't be more happy and proud for him um, just because, you know, I think he's faced a lot of unfair criticism when it comes to, to uh, the postseason at times because, you know, um, but the more you go through these things, the, the more experience you have and the more, more at peace you are, uh, you know. At, well, over here. What was your confidence in just the team's mental makeup or toughness? You're down 20 game seven, defending champs, they're building that they had this in them to, to pull it out. At one moment, maybe throughout the season or, or whatever, did you realize that this group had a night like this? In yeah, them? I mean, listen, I mean, um, we're uh, I'm very confident in our guys all the time, you know. Um, and again, down 20, we were guarding and we were playing hard. We just weren't playing very smart on the offensive end. So once we figured that out, I thought we'd, we could make a run and tighten the game up a little bit before halftime. And I thought, you know, could have been 11, but it ended up being 15. Mike lay up and they lay it in at the other end, end of the floor. Um, but, um, you know, our guys, when you defend, you give yourself a chance all the time. Um, and, um, yeah, so I didn't lose faith in our guys. You know, it's too early, it was way too early to do that. But... We hadn't done a good job in games three, four, and five of kind of surviving our own bad offense. And tonight we were able to do that, you know, so. Chris, I wonder for you personally, I mean, you've seen a, a ton in this game, you've done a lot in this game, but between the injury and then the journey that you, you have with this squad, I think late third quarter, you start getting out of the chair a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we've seen you do that. I mean, is this, you know, is this gonna be a night that you remember for a long time? I, yeah, for sure. It's a big moment for our club, you know, you know every. Everybody talks about the last 30 years, which mean nothing to me. Um, but it does mean a lot to a lot of people to see this team, root for this team, the cities behind this team. Um, and to beat a team like Denver on their home floor, you know, the way we did, of course, is going to mean a lot for sure. So. Chris, you touched on it a little bit a moment ago, but Denver really wrestled momentum away after game five. What was the conversation like with the players, the staff? to have the ability to turn things around and, and win two elimination games the way that you did? Yeah. I mean, I thought game five was our worst technical performance of the game of the series. Um, you know, the effort was there, but we just did not play very smart, uh, particularly on the offensive end of the floor. And I thought defensively we gambled a lot outside the game plan. Um, and I don't know why it happened that way. It just did. Um, and that gave me great confidence that uh, you know, we can come in and turn things around because there was a lot of solutions that we could see easily on tape for game six. And we said to ourselves all series long, our best is better than their best. We just have to play our best. And we hadn't done that in the middle of the series. It seemed like the offense had a lot of perimeter passing and not as much entry passing. And it seems like you're, this season when you haven't turned the ball over, your defense is able to win games. So you had very few turnovers. Yeah. Was that part of the offensive philosophy is to not you know, not only not dribble into people, but basically make the safe, quick pass? I, yeah, for sure. And in game five, we didn't. We were driving into crowds. We had, you know, those three charges and four possessions, and the other one was blocked. So, um, and we knew what they were doing defensively. They were going to put two on Cat in the post. They were going to put two on Ant in the perimeter, and we just had to make the right play, and then the next guy had to make the right play. And that chain reaction is, is was really the solution and the key, so... What was your thought process when you saw Rudy Gobert with the turnaround jump <laughs> in the fourth quarter? Yeah, it was a heck of an ATO we drew up for him. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, you need that, you know. Uh, he made one of those in game one, too. Um, made one of those in game one. So I was happy for him because it made up for the fast break layup that he missed. So. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.